The Pakasetid is the whale's oldest known ancestor. It was a land mammal, but may have spent some of its time in water. They possessed some traits of modern-day whales, including the positioning of the ear bones within the skull, as well as triangular molars. The Pakasetids laid a strong foundation, which successfully transformed into a marine mammal. Often known as the missing link in whale evolution is the Ambulectus, who lived 50 million years ago. They came after the Pakistids and developed hind legs that helped them to gain sufficient swimming ability. However, <clears throat> while now being able to swim, they still occasionally walked around on land. The Ambulectus was considerably larger than the Placid, having a length of 10 feet and weighing about 500 pounds, while their predecessors were 3 feet long and weighed somewhere around 50 pounds. Placetids hunted very small fish by quickly nabbing them out of the water from the edge of streams and ponds. As a result of their small size, the Placetids had a very limited variety of prey, forcing them to evolve into much larger animals, which in turn gave them the ability to swim, developing features such as webbed feet and padded feet, as well as a narrow snout. With their bigger frame and their ability to swim, Ambulectus were able to hunt for larger animals and could hide while doing so in the water by coming out at the last second and surprising their prey. This method of eating proved to be better for their health as they did not have to rely on small fish swimming by near the water's edge. They could now go after large prey because of their increased size. The road Hocetus is estimated to have lived about 45 million years ago. It kept the double-spooled ankle bones passed on by the Pacoceted for increased mobility in the water. Other features also display a clear transition to a more aquatic lifestyle. It has ears that are similar to the modern whales, which are ideal for hearing underwater. The Rhodocetus also had large hind feet, which were advantageous for paddling in water. Its tail became thicker and larger than the Pacasetids, and was successful in acting as a rudder. Additionally, the nasal opening of the Rhodocetus was moved higher up the skull, a pattern known as nasal drift, which would eventually result in the blowhole of the modern whale. Isolated to a very specific region, the Basilosaurus is restricted to shallow sea waters. The Basilosaurus was often mistaken for a lizard due to its eel-like appearance and small hind legs. However, it was categorized as a mammal as a result of its jawbone and its ribs. It was not known for its intelligence and was a very limited organism. The Basilosaurus could neither rely on its legs to walk on land nor dive into the deeper ocean waters. The Rhodohocetus, prior to the Basilosaurus, had the ability to walk on land, but not very efficiently. Evolution made the Basilosaurus a strictly aquatic organism because this was the environment where it thrived and was most efficient. The earlier Rhodohocetus also had a very different body structure. They had four flipper-like feet, which they used to swim, and a small tail, which was not very effective. The Basilosaurus, however, had a body shape similar to that of an eel, with a long tail which it used to maneuver. This is a prime example of evolution. This change allowed the Basilosaurus to swim much quicker. This increase in agility and efficiency allowed the Basilosaurus to hunt its prey easier and made it more inept to survive in the shallow waters of the seas. The Adiocetus was prevalent around 25 million years ago. There were larger marine mammals at the time that the Adiocetus could not successfully compete with. To avoid competition for food, the Adiocetus developed the whale's signature baleen. The baleen is a filter feeder system which consists of thousands of thin hairs that act as a sieve to catch relatively tiny organisms. The Adiocetus fed on small fish crustaceans, and plankton. Fully developed teeth accompanied the baleen. This shows how the Adiocetus was a transitional species because the Pacocetid used a fully developed jaw to feed on prey, and now the modern gray whale exclusively uses its baleen to feed on plankton. The modern whales have continued many of these adaptations. The nasal opening continued to move higher up the skull and developed into what is now recognized as the whale's blowhole. This adaptation allows whales to get oxygen while only exposing the top of their bodies above the water's surface. 
In order to stay submerged for the maximum period of time, some whales have adapted to be capable of exchanging 90% of the air volume within their lungs with each breath. To put this in perspective, it can be compared to humans who exchange about 20%. Whales have also developed a layer of dense blubber that can be about 50 centimeters thick. This allows whales to maintain a safe body temperature while diving deeper into cold water.